Boom, we are live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the NHA YouTube channel. And I hope you guys are having a fantastic week, wherever you may be. And of course, however you may be listening. I have some exciting news. This news actually dropped a few days ago, uh, one or two days ago as the Iowa Hawkeyes received their newest commitment from Colorado native defensive end Chase Backney, I believe it is, or Brackney. We're going to take a look at his profile his, or his recruiting profile, his uh, offer sheet, his highlights. Uh, yep, let's go. Let's go. Chase Brackney. Uh, the whole nine yards. Highlights uh recruiting profile uh offer sheet we got it we got it um but before we get into any of that i want to mention going to 247 hockey.com and asking you to smash that subscribe button because well subscribing makes you feel good and at the very least like comment share you know the drill by now without further ado let's get in to this well this is a very important commitment in my mind. I think th there's two ways that an Iowa, Iowa recruiting class becomes really good, really solid. Uh, obviously, there's, mo there's even more ways than that, but, but these are the two reasons. Number one, they have a really strong group of in-state talent. That they can that they get committed and signed to their school. Okay. We saw that in the 2021 class. It was one of the best in-state recruiting years in the history of the state of Iowa. And the next year was pretty good as well. Uh, but Iowa, you know, it, while they did land some important guys like Xavier Nwangpa and Aaron Graves they did also leave some guys on the table. And I would also say recruiting in the state of Iowa in general has been getting a lot better. Um, the other, th the other way that the, uh, that the university of Iowa gets a really solid recruiting class is by the out-of-staters, the, the random guys that, you know, you're like, what? I didn't even know what, what led to this relationship being formed. How did, how did they, when did who what when and you know this is kind of that uh that colorado is the state of colorado iowa goes there but if you look at their offer sheets it, it's kind of hit or miss sometimes they go there sometimes they don't i would say each recruiting cycle they have one or two offers in the state of colorado um, you know, Alex Padilla is from Cherry Creek, which I do, which if I had to guess, probably helped in Chase Brackney's recruitment um, in general. Uh, and the other thing that I would say uh, probably helped without me having to take a look at it is Iowa's defensive line success. Uh, Iowa's defensive line success is one of the most unheralded uh, position groups as it, the success of the position group is is up there with the corners and the offensive line for the best position group on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Uh, Kelvin Bell is doing a great job. Jay Neiman is doing a great job. He uh, deserves a lot of credit uh, in for recruiting in general. I don't know if you guys know this, but Jay Neiman was the top recruiter uh, for the Iowa Hawkeyes in the 2022 recruiting class. Now, before we take a look at Chase Brackney's, um, well, you guys can already see it, uh, but I want to take a look at who the Hawkeyes have committed right now. Uh, and it's, it's a pretty good group of guys uh, this early in the recruiting cycle. Uh, you already have your quarterback, uh, four-star Marco Lenez, who had the connection via quarterback coach, um, the same quarterback coach as Nate Stanley. Uh, if you're not aware of that, that is the major connection that Marco, because if you're wondering, man, how did the Hawkeyes get in so good with somebody from New Jersey? Well, it was the quarterback coach. Uh, that is the answer. Uh, ben Cooter, 
was uh, offered by Iowa State first. Uh, he is an excellent wrestler. In fact, I believe he is going to be wrestling at Iowa as well. Uh, I think he is highly, highly underrated. Uh, he is very, very skilled, very, very talented. He single-handedly took uh, Iowa City, uh, I forget which, which Iowa City, not Iowa City West, I think, yeah, Iowa City. He single-handedly took them to the state semifinals or finals. I can't remember, but either way, he took them on a deep, deep run. Uh, Maddox Borcheting Johnson is just a classic in-state interior guy. He can wrestle. Um, you know, he could probably play both offensive and defensive line. Uh, he hasn't physically matured all the way. Uh, his body has not become a man's body yet, uh, but it will soon enough. I think Max Borcheting Johnson has a lot of potential to, to climb up the recruiting rankings. Uh, and now they have Chase Brackney. And let's take a look. This is probably the most, the most impressive thing to me is his offer sheet. Uh, he had Colorado. So both in state schools, Colorado and Colorado State. I'm going back to Colorado. Uh, I, uh, that's the uh, Ozark Mountain Daredevils. Some of you guys will know that reference. <laughs> the only reason why I know that is because uh, my grandpa. But anyways, um, Nebraska offered him. Uh, USC offered. And he was considering USC pretty highly um you know usc is one of the schools that on a consistent basis pulls uh guys out of colorado and so this early in the stage his offer sheet was was excellent it was great um uh, you know some solid power five schools some group of five uh, guys and uh so there we go and 247 sports gives him an initial uh, player ranking or excuse me player grade of an 87 I thought he might get uh, a grade of a 90 due to his offer sheet and to be honest with you had he committed to USC I think he probably would have uh, I hate to say it but that is how this works uh, depending on which school you commit to it can negatively or positively impact your grade I know you know, we would all like to pretend that there is no bias uh, when it comes to uh, grading, but there absolutely 100% is. Um, so anyways, all right, we are going to check out his highlight film and I will give you guys my analysis of his game. We're not going to watch too much of it. Um, let me pause this here real quick and get this all set up for you guys. Real quick, just real quick, I did want to read this to you since this that's usually what I do. Um, the Iowa Hawkeyes landed a new commitment in the class of 2023 on Monday from Colorado defensive end Chase Brackney. By the way, side note, anecdotal of your favorite uh, YouTuber, uh, no, your boy Nolan here. Um, I was born in Colorado Springs. That uh, I was born on the Air Force Academy um, uh, so I, matter of fact, I just visited Colorado about a year ago. Uh, and, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure, uh, what's this school, uh, Cherry Creek is around the Denver area. And I can't remember exactly where I went and, and visited anyways from Colorado. Uh, so, me and your boy Chase got that connection. Let's go. Let's go. Let's keep reading. Um, Iowa checked all the boxes, Brackney told HawkeyeReport.com. It was just a perfect fit. The six foot four, 260 pound Brackney, great size, great size. He might even um, grow one, one or two more inches before he gets to Iowa. Who visited Iowa City on January 23rd, chose the Hawkeyes over scholarship offers from Nebraska, USC, Cal, Colorado, Oregon State, Utah State, Colorado State. New Mexico State, and Eastern Midge. All the schools I was talking to were really nice to me and respectful, but Iowa just felt like home, said Brackney. When you know, you know. Uh, let's read this last part here. The big thing for me was the academic side of things, Brackney said. I really liked the academic structure. 
Uh, for the athletes, second, I like that all the facilities were close by and easy access. Third, the coaching staff has been together for many years. The head coach has been there 20 plus years. I knew this was a football program I could truly commit to. Last but not least, the true icing on the cake for me was that the visitors have a pink locker room. <laughs> Let's go. I, this guy's cool. This guy's cool. I love it. And this is his, uh, uh, this is his, uh, Twitter commit, uh, graphic. So that is, that's nice. I, you know, listen, um, you know, when I went, I, I couldn't agree with him more, uh, a hundred percent. It is, you know, for me, my going to the pool every day for practice was brutal. It was not anywhere near my classes. Uh, and so having the facilities next to, um, your uh, sport or school is really, really great. All right, there we go. I queued it up for you guys, uh, maximized it. Let's check this out. And I can, unfortunately, I can't turn the music up um, because, you know, I, I, I've learned my lesson too many times. The, the best way to get copyrighted is to play the sound uh, because it has the music, which is easy to spot uh, right away. By the way, you know, when I talk about this copyright thing, um, you know, it, it's not a hard, fast rule. It's not something that is super clear. Um, you know, even if you um, cite your sources, uh, do everything needed for it to not be, you know, it's still the person may decide to uh, push a copyright on you and it's done. So anyways, I know this, <laughs> I know that's not related to this, but uh, that's okay. That's all right. Um, I got to say, he has a ne very nice first step. Uh, so far, from what I've seen, he has been able to get into the backfield fairly quickly. It is going to be interesting to see because a lot of the Iowa defensive ends that commit to Iowa, you know, there's no guarantee that they are going to be defensive ends. A lot of times they slide inside because the, the, the coaching staff of Iowa knows that they can uh, get them to the proper uh, weight. No problem. Uh, we've seen it with Lucas Van Ness. He went from a defensive end out of coming out of Illinois high school to defensive tackle. I mean, it, it's not just him. There's multiple, multiple guys. Um, another guy, I'm trying to think. Um, gosh darn it. I can't believe I'm, I'm blanking on his, on his name here. L let me look up his name real quick. Here we go. Yaya Black. He was um, a defensive end. Ethan Herkett was a linebacker. So, you know, it, it really does. Um, I think the Iowa coaching staff, it, what the – there's multiple things that they do excellent um, as evaluators. But one of those things is identifying talent that has potential still left to grow, meaning that they can get them on campus and get even more out of them, that, that by the time they get them, they are not finished products yet, uh, which you know means Iowa can do a lot to help them. Um, the other thing that Iowa does is they find athletes that they know it doesn't, it doesn't even necessarily matter what position they are playing coming out of high school. They are athletes who play multiple sports and the Iowa coaching staff knows that they can uh, put them in multiple positions if they need to, um, you know, if they are low, for defensive tackle depth, well, they can move a few guys over there because they have the athletic ability to move over there. They are not uh, set in stone and um, sport-specific uh, athletes. So Iowa does a good job of that. And matter of fact, again, Aaron Graves, the defensive end, uh, uh, four-star defensive end out of um, Gallery, who did an excellent job in the U S army all American game. I was actually shocked. He did not see his recruiting ranking go up. He did so well. 
Um, but, uh, you know, there's been talk about him playing defensive tackle uh, at Iowa, which is totally possible. So, um, so that is, as I said, that is something that Iowa does that is really, really good. Um, you know, again, right off the, right off the bat with this guy, we're going to watch a little bit more of it. He, I think he can play inside or outside. He has a quick first step. Um, he, I, he's six foot four right now, which is excellent size. Even if that's as far as he grows, that would be fine. But I think it's totally possible that he still grows a half inch, maybe one more inch and maybe even two and can get to six foot two by the time, uh, college starts. Uh, he's already 260 pounds. So the muscle or the weight that the Iowa coaching staff will be able to put on him will be pure muscle, some fat. They'll be able to add some fat onto him as well, but it'll mostly be muscle because he's already 260 pounds, a school like Cherry Creek, you know, a suburban high school, a good area. Um, they have a, they have good athletic programs. Uh, it reminds me of where I grew up in high school, where everything is above board and really intelligent and smart. Um, and, you know, a guy like him coming from a prestigious school, I mean, Cherry Creek pumps out division one athletes every year. So a school like that is going to prepare their athletes phenomenally for the next level. And I say that to say that it doesn't shock me one bit that Chase Brackney is 260 pounds. And it's not going to shock me one bit that he is one of the more ready freshmen or underclassmen when he gets to Iowa to get some early playing time, because I guarantee his school has phenomenal uh, weight room, um, you know, weight room, uh, uh, whatever, weight room, good stuff. Okay. Uh, so, in fact, I'd be shocked if they didn't. So I'm, I'm fairly certain that they do. Um, and this is really, really good. This is an excellent pickup for the Iowa Hawkeyes. The, the defensive line recruiting for the Iowa Hawkeyes is excellent. And I, and I do want to show you guys what I mean. I mean, it really has been uh, second to none the past three recruiting classes. Um, it doesn't get much better than the past three recruiting class. Let's take a look here while this loads. Okay. So in the 2023 recruiting class, Iowa already has Maddox, Borchetting Johnson and Chase Brackney. Okay. These two guys, let's go to 2022 here. And of course you win on the inside of the both of both the offensive and defensive line. Okay. Caden Crawford, a uh, high three-star uh, quarterback slash D he played quarterback for his high school slash defensive end, uh, f you know, uh, has phenomenal lifting videos. Brian Allen, who is a high three-star four-star by rivals.com. Uh, Aaron Graves, who is a four-star. This is all in the 2022 recruiting class. Let's see if they, if they have one more. I can't remember if they had uh, one more. Uh, so that's, so that's that one. Okay. Really, really good. Um, and let's go to 2021. Okay. Uh, justice Sullivan four star. Uh, now he might end up playing linebacker. So, so we'll see Max Llewellyn four star. Let's keep going. Griffin little high three. Now he is on the offensive line, so I'm not going to count him. He is now on the offensive line. So I, I am not going to count him, but still Jeffrey Bowie, high three star, uh, Max Llewellyn, four star and justice Sullivan, four star guys, the defensive line, Kelvin bell is recruiting at such a high level. My hopes are so high for the Iowa Hawkeyes in the next three years. Uh, it, it, it really, really is. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. It was a pleasure watching Chase's uh, highlight film. This is a gem of a get. I know I say that all the time, but I'm really excited about this uh, commitment. 
uh, Cherry Creek is an excellent school. So I guarantee that this, that this uh, prospect is a great kid. He works hard. He knows how to get it done. Uh, he knows how to compete. He knows how to give effort. Uh, all those things are what counts. He has the size. He has the ability. Um, and uh, his offer sheet is, uh, is beautiful. So uh, I have zero concerns uh, with uh, this new commitment. The only question I have is whether he plays on the inside or on the outside. So uh, we will see. All right, guys, I will see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button uh, because, well, subscribe and make sure you feel good. Uh, at the very least, like, comment, share. And last but not least, DBAP, don't be a pussy willow. In fact, our feelings, your feelings don't matter. Love y'all. See you guys next time. Go Hawks. Bye.